Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. I um want to talk to the family today, you know, because it's really important that we get some uh some food for ourselves, okay. Now, I know that everybody gets their blood boiling to a, a running over situation when the police are responsible for killing us. And I, and I understand that because these are paid civil servants who have supposedly gone through the training and everything to be able to de-escalate, to be able to handle adverse uh, situations. And with this being said, um, what we've been seeing has not been any indication of any training that they had, right? So I wanted to make a video that would try to be as honest as possible about what our responsibility, especially given in like what's happening over there in Detroit. I think this that's the catalyst to this video because I took the police training. I took that, um, well, it's a, it's actually a citizen course, and I don't know if y'all got that in y'all city, but in our city, we have a, uh, 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 a two, was it, a, a three Saturday course, I believe it is, and, um, what you do is you're put in situations Part of the, 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 the uh, simulation portion is pretty much what the guys go through in the academy. I mean, you have people jumping out of nowhere, you know, coming out with a gun, you know, to shoot you. And you have to have instant, quick reflexes to be able to address that emergency situation at the time that it's happening. Uh, or they'll have a situation where there's a robber. And somebody is uh, maybe uh, holding someone hostage with a knife up to the person's throat. And uh, you are the officer that's, that have, has come there to the scene. And you got to keep this person calm while he's threatening to stab the person. Or, you know, what do you do? There's all kinds of simulated situations that police find themselves in. And when you go through this course, what it's supposed to do is give you a little more, I guess, um, understanding and a little bit more slack. I guess give you give you a little bit more reasoning to understand how a lot of police officers had to make split second decisions, and sometimes they're not always the best. Okay, so I get it. And the reason why I took that class is so I could get it. Uh, and having law enforcement people in my family that I look at and I love, and I don't want to see them as other, especially when it comes to your homies and your family and people you know. You can't. I don't want to look at them like that. And from what I know of them, they not like that. Okay. So I grew up in the move in the era where the movie is spooked that sat by the door. And I think a lot of the young men that joined the departments like the fire department or the police department or something when I was coming up, um, um it, it was because they thought they could make a change. And they didn't know how systemically ingrained the racism in these departments were, right? Okay. So my brother always tell me. Um, and now I'm starting to understand what he meant. He's, he says, people always talk about there's a flux. The FBI gave a report that there's an influx of white supremacists in the police department. He says, I believe it's the other way around. Your sheriffs, your senators, all of them, if you look throughout history, have been Klansmen. Your law enforcement, your sheriffs, the deputies, all of them was Klansmen. Look at all your movies. Look at all the... Uh, when you go to the racist sheriff and blah, 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 blah. And then at night they put their sheets on and they become night riders. I'm saying that to say 
the good people are trying to get in and probably actually try to make a change in what's going on in society and they they're not able to they're not able to talk about it. they have to join a culture that is crazy and for a lot of y'all that don't know what that is i know what that feels like and some of us that's old enough we understand what it feels like to have to be either you want to put up or shut up or you gonna get up out of this because you know it's not what is for you or you're gonna have to ride with it okay and i personally have been taught not to ride with anything that i can't feel comfortable sleeping at night with what i did and my decision i i can't ride with those type of um decisions so what i'm seeing now in my community is after all this drama from the outside looking in and all the long time oppression that's been put on us now we're in a situation where we're just putting so much hatred on ourselves that i don't even know what i can i can't even focus on the police you can't keep focusing on the police when we're losing our army from within we are losing our soldiers our people the in the village from within because we're killing them off we don't have to even Work. You know what? Listen, Willie Lynch said that if you would implement all those ideas and whether you believe it or not, he said, if you implement all these things that I'm giving you when he was on the banks of the Jonestown River, giving that horrible speech, he said, black people will be perpetually miserable. You don't have to worry about them anymore. It's just like when you get a elephant and you, uh, and I don't know if anybody has been to India or if you've seen any of those videos where they're training the elephant and they have a big old chain on his leg, he can't go any place. And so for years and years, you were conditioned that way first. And then the white people were conditioned to be like, hey, I can treat these people crazy. So now you have developed a self-hatred for yourself that anything that looks like you, you don't have, a, you don't give a damn about it. You don't. Because you're quick to bust on your own people, but you're not busting on, on the enemy like that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying whether you should or whether you shouldn't. That's not my point. My point is you're quick to destroy your own self. And that's because you, you have been taught that yourself is worthless. See, and I don't think that the dominant society really, really thinks about what has happened to a people who have been taught for not just 100 years but, or 200 years, but for 400 years that the texture of their hair, and the uh, wideness of their nose and the thickness of their lips and um, that bird, that brain, they couldn't learn to read. And then they was talked about because they their broken English when the language wasn't their own. I don't think what a lot of people give a lot of credit to what that does to an individual emotionally. So if black people could see how strong and beautiful they are, just to make it to this point, just to make it where we at, and we still gotta live with these psychopaths, to think that you've overcome that should give you a real special love. For your tribe first. Because you know that the trauma that your tribe has been through. I'm not saying that you shouldn't love anybody else, but you gotta it gotta start with your tribe. That's first. First law of nature is self-preservation. So you got to love yourself first. And this hatred of ourselves have got to be re-examined, y'all. We're gonna have to have some drop squads or some uh, weekly meetings in the community where we got to deal with what's really happening and when of course we know with this pandemic that nobody's going to be going out meeting anywhere but we're going to have to have all hands on deck to get to these young people about killing of ourselves Cause that's really basically what he's doing. You don't see no nobody out here my age running around here shooting people and stuff like that. 
we have to really, really get them and let them know how valuable they really are and how emotionally out of balance they are that if when they get upset, the first thing they got to do is grab a gun and kill somebody that look like them. And how that's a taught and learned behavior. They have to be shown that and where it comes from, the hatred for themselves. You got to see it. So, if the elders want to know what they can do, they got to continue and continue to a lot of young people to know it's unacceptable to kill off our own army. And that's treasonous, and then you have to be regarded as a traitor. And then we have to deal with our traitors accordingly. I mean, it's just really that simple, in my opinion. But, you know, so I'm, I'm just saying this to say, y'all, we got to stop hurting ourselves. We really do. We got to stop. We got to stop. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, y'all, please like, subscribe, and uh, share my channel. We're trying to grow this channel. Uh... And can't do it without your help. Let me also say, uh, Tafrica, that 414 number that you see that's uh, trying to call you, that's uh, Milwaukee. So if you anything like me, you want to know who it is before you answer. But when you see the 414 number, that's uh, Milwaukee calling. I'm trying to give you a call. So I um, just wanted to give you a shout out. And all the rest of my subs that um, are out there and have been encouraging me to um, go ahead and do uh, more live streams. And I will be doing it. I'm just trying to make sure my equipment is up to par. Okay, because that's what I really want to do. I really want to uh, make sure this happening. It's been long enough. So with that being said, um, holla at me. If you like what you hear, like. See you in the next video.